here at 6 o'clock, exactly for a change, which is kind of neat. Frontier Regional School Committee of the Joint School Committee on February 9th, and I will do roll call. Judy Pierce? Yep. William Smith? Yes, ma'am. Keith McFarland? Here. Bob Decker? Yes. Bill Cantor? Yes. Mary Raymond? Yes. Robert Holla? Yes. Alan Lip? Yes. Lynn Roberts? Yes. William Marapizzi? Yes. Cindy Wamet? Yes. Okay. I will call the uh, Union 38 Committee to order. I guess we could do a roll call too, but <laughs> I'm taking people off. Right. <laughs> I always do <laughs> Right. I, I have been checking people off as, they, as they've arrived, so we'll dispense with the um, roll call for now. You do. We'll do calls yeah. when we get to vote. <clears throat> so. Do you want to approve your minutes first? Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of January 28th, 2016. Who's making? Don wants the motion. Got it. Any discussion? Hearing uh, I'll call for vote. I'll call names on the vote. For Deerfield, Kenneth Cutterbeck, yes. David Sharp? Yes. Uh, Conway Janice? Abstain. Abstain. Here. And Ira? Yes. Okay, and uh, Sunderland, is Gregory here? Yes. Douglas? Just got He's not here yet. Is he? Oh, there he is. Doug, Mr. Minutes? Right. Minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Keith? Yes. Yes. Uh, Waitley Don? Yes. Bob? Yes. Yeah. Katie's here? Katie's not here No, yet, she's, right? not, she's not coming tonight. Okay. okay. And I would like a motion to approve the minutes of January 28, 2016 for the Frontier Regional. Do I have a second? Any discussion? Um, Bill. Uh, Judy Pierce? Yes. Robert, uh, William Smith? Yes. Keith McFarland? Yes. Robert Decker? Yes. Bill Cantor? Yes. Mary Raymond? Yes. Robert Holla? Yes. Alan Lip? Yes. Lynn Roberts? Yes. William Mayor Pizzi? Yes. Cindy Lamette? Yes. At this time, I would like to turn the meeting over to Pat Car Carrera. Is that pronounced oh, correctly? <laughs> and uh, you're on. Okay, thank you. And I know you have another meeting to go to, so we're going to do this real quick. Um, <clears throat> in your packet is a paper clip. Bunch of documents. I want you to look at them first because that's the finalist timeline and I need your approval on that. Okay. Um, <coughs> what the search committee felt was doable. And these are the names of your candidates, your finalists. And you have to shrunk the timeline to accommodate you two candidates and to make sure that we have a superintendent on board February 24th. Our timeline did not call for that. So and also in this packet are, are some more information on, on the two candidates. So I need you to approve this. If you have any questions, certainly feel free to ask. Um, but right now, before we go any further, I, I, I need a vote, a motion to vote to approve this time. Okay, is, um, do we have to take a motion to approve that timeline? We don't have to amend the other one that we've already voted on by just approving this one. Will that negate the other one? Yeah, yes. Okay. So for Frontier, I would like a motion. Well, after we get a motion. As soon as we get a motion. Um, Frontier, if you would be so kind, I'd like a motion to finish a sentence. <laughs> do I have a second? second. Now discussion. Could we uh, put it on the floor for the union as well before Why don't we, we do go that? to discussion? Great so idea. Could I no, it? just Frontier can discuss. <laughs> <laughs> could I have a motion from the union? Greg. Okay, Greg, thank you. In a second? David, Greg. thank you. And we're on the floor for discussion. Bob? 
now that the selection committee so it was a search committee, and now a selection committee and boiled it down to two people. Uh, what's going to happen if one withdraws prior to our board voting to select somebody? Are we going to start again? Are we going to move the other candidate? Uh, or what is going to happen? Because I was under the impression we were going to have three to five people presented to us. I listened to Pat, I listened to the gentleman on my left, and he's explained some of the rationale. But I'm very leery about going in with just going forward with just two candidates. And I think it's probably too late to change that. But I think it has to be understood that if one should withdraw, we should start again or come back and do some real serious brainstorming of what we're doing and just not automatically offer it to the remaining candidates. And I have no question about their qualification or anything else. I just talk to procedure wise. That's, that's my question. And uh, I guess then the screen is going to hear from the search committee on what their thoughts are. I think we should hear from Pat. Because you, you, you were going to say something there? Well, uh, I was going to try and answer his question. Go right ahead. I'd answer the rest of the question. Yep. And if not, I'm happy to answer whatever you have. I never go back and offer the number two candidate or number three candidate the position. I don't feel that that's ethical to do. And if I were a candidate and I was the second choice, I wouldn't take the job anyway because I would want to be first on the list. So that's number one. If we should come to that, and I don't think we will, having spoken to both of these, these ladies, I, I'm very comfortable with that, um, we will just go back out and re-advertise. Not go through the whole search again, just re-advertise and see what kind of a pool of candidates we get. I will tell you, we had 20, okay? And I, I told you this. Uh, two did not complete the application process that we desired. One is a candidate that I have not sent forward for a myriad of reasons, and neither have my colleagues in any of our searches. Uh, so that left us with 17. My office, we went through them, we vetted them, and brought you 10. One candidate withdrew because she was offered a position in another district. And another candidate withdrew with no specific reason. So then we were down to eight. Eight, eight were interviewed, and I can tell you that the two that were giving you, that the search committee is sending to you, were, were all, both of them were unanimous votes. And we did vote again, and we spent two hours discussing and talking about these candidates, and everybody had an input into this. Um, the next two highest vote getters were five and four. Out of how many? Out of, um, out of eight. Okay. No, out of 11. 11. 11. 11 possible votes. I'm sorry, 11 possible votes. And we had had a discussion saying, OK, every candidate that we sent forward at least should have six votes. At least a majority of the 11 members of the search committee. And that was reasonable. That's usually what happened. They just didn't make it. I mean, even after two hours of discussion and after several votes. Um, as I said, five and four. So we, they had more discussion and decided that these are the two candidates we would send you. They would send you. Because they get received unanimous votes. Both of them have been contacted. Both of them are excited about the search. Both of them can't wait to get here. Um, I mean, they're already planning on what they're going to do when they get here, and they're, I mean, if, they're, if they happen to be chosen. Um, so, does that answer, help answer your question? We will not do a full blown search, it's not necessary, but we will go back out and advertise the position should we come to that. So, the point that I'm trying to so we all understand, okay. right, is when we go to the final interview, if we only have one person coming for the final interview, we're going to open the search up and go up. If somebody is withdrawn the day before or the evening of that, before that started that interview, then we're going to go extend the search at that point uh, and then uh, 
You wouldn't have well, it. Well, I, I think, no, we don't. You I wouldn't mean, even have an interview if one of them out. What's because the point? Well, that's my point. It's you have two qualified candidates, okay? If one should, the night before or the morning of that vote, call me and say, I'm not going to, I've decided to withdraw, the least you could do is a professional courtesy is to interview that final candidate that's, right. that's left. Why and then you? if you're not happy right. with that person, then yeah. don't vote for that person, and then we'll go back out again. But professional <coughs> courtesy is very important. Well, I, I we have somebody else that's waiting to go ahead. Uh, Our minutes are still in Excuse private, me. right? Is that for the, for the, for the subcommittee? I don't want to... I don't want to say something that isn't public yet in terms of our committee deliberations, but but your, your to executive say, session minutes have not been right, been released, right, right? Right, right. So that's public. But without, I think, give any and giving away anything that would be inappropriate. I mean, there was a lot of deliberation about just what you're talking about, and it's why it was such a long meeting, uh, um, because um, I think we went in there <clears throat> with it, with that wanting to send three to five candidates to this bigger body, um, you know, thinking that that would be, you know, it would be better, um, to have that. And if we could have done that in a way that would have sent three candidates that, you know, a majority of the, at least a majority, uh, not to mention getting, you know, consensus around them being viable candidates from the subcommittee, it would have happened rather than us and agonizing <laughs> for for two you know an additional two hours and, um, over that. So uh, you know, and, it, um, and and I do think that if um, if one withdrew, I do think it would be worthwhile um, to interview uh, the other because I think in, you know both cases. Uh, I don't want to interview with the other, but, but what I'm saying is we should keep an open mind that we we may want to open up the search just to get a broader perspective of people sure. rather than yep. the, this person is going to get it. And I don't think the person's going to want to take it as a and, and I think that's always, I think that's always true, Bob. I mean, I think that we could interview two or we could have interviewed three in this group and, and, and then two. the bigger group could have said, you know what? We don't see any of these people, and we need to and we need to go back, it, you know. And so um, I agree. We should we definitely should go in with an open mind. We, we want to have a, we want to have an excellent, you know, leader for the for the union leaders. Bob Hall. Yeah, could you, could you tell us? You know, you spoke to both these people. You think they're going to be around? Yes, I do. In fact, that's one of the reasons that we kind of ask for permission to change um, the, the timeline. Yep. All right, one of them is in another search. However, my discussion with her was, I, she wants this position. And she's not ready to say yes to the other position until after we make, you make your decision. So, and that's one of the main reasons. Any other discussion, Phil? Just to, uh, to you know, one, one of the ways to reframe the issue that, that you're so concerned about, the three to five issue, is, you know, if, if the committee came out and decided, okay, you got these two that are, are unanimous and you have the rest, or uh, if, if we would have artificially just stuck to, to, to say an artificial, you have to have three, you would then be artificially inflating the value of that third candidate. Because you can't, you can't put forward two and then one with an asterisk. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, 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 but it does the. It, it, it's, it's, it's what's the greater risk? You know, not having quite as many as you want, or. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, or not having the one that you want. A good choice. I do believe the minute yeah, said up to five. It didn't say three to five. So you're well within what we voted on. But it, that's not what's reflected in the minutes, is what I'm saying. So, does anyone else have anything? Just from the um, 
executive director search at uh, the collaborative. Bob, you remember this. I, mean, oh, I know. They brought us one. The, the yeah. one candidate, right. and then the right. next closest candidate was not even in the league of the one we picked and the one candidate. So I don't see why you have to arbitrarily stick to having three candidates if you have two who are that far <coughs> from the field. It just doesn't make any sense. It wastes everybody time, everybody's time. I was on that subcommittee too, and we agonized a lot of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Over that. And, I mean, and between one and two, the difference was like light years of experience. That would have cost us $68,000 for that. Yeah, he <laughs> um, was in the building. Maybe so, moving that. things along, I thank the committee for agonizing <laughs> yeah. for those two hours yeah. and that I wasn't there to be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we agonize enough here. So, if there is no further discussion on the frontier side, I would like to take a vote to move the timeline up to meet with the new schedule as soon as I find my names. And the candidates. And the, um, so I'm, we're voting on this whole thing, the site visit, the candidate yes. site visit, meeting with Pat, all of that type of stuff. Right. Does everybody yeah. understand that? We're, it's all encumbering. <laughs> okay, so Judy Pierce? Yep. William Smith? Yeah. Keith McFarland? Yes. Robert Decker? <laughs> Put an asterisk. Okay, I oh yeah, right. Phil Cantor, Mary Raymond. Enthusiastically. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Robert Holla. Yes. Alan Lip. Yes. Lynn Roberts. Yes. William Marapizzi. I'll just say yes. And Cindy Womat. Absolutely, positively yes. Okay. Kenny. And for the union, uh, Kenneth Cutterback, yes. Jameson's still not here. David? Yes. <coughs> Conway, Janice? Yes. Elaine? Yes. Still, yes. <coughs> Ira? Yes. Uh, Sunderland, Gregory? Yes. Douglas? Yes. Keith? Yes. Waitley, Don? Yes. Katie? Not here. Not here. Bob? Yes. Okay. It's unanimous. And we thank you for your efforts in the subcommittee and Pat, thank you very much. Hey, um, Frontier needs a motion to adjourn. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. I'd like to hear the end of it. <laughs> We're so humble. What time's your meeting? Um, yeah, it's 6.17. You're, you're good to go for a few minutes. Trying to move things along. 13 minutes. Uh, as far as the site visits are concerned, uh, um, there's information in here about uh, the site visits to the candidates um, and uh, a schedule of who they are going to be seeing and talking with, okay? As far as uh, who's going, uh, we have that, and um, I understand Trevor wants to change, so we can do that. That's okay. not a problem. We can do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the candidates will be here February 22nd. Uh, Lynn Carey will be here on the 22nd, and then on, on Tuesday the 23rd, Captain Clark will be here. Um, I can't stress enough, uh, this meet and greet that we have down here from 4.30 to 5.30 is like huge. I would encourage you to ask your neighbors to come out and say hello because one of these candidates is going to be a superintendent. You know, God willing, the creek don't rise. Um, they should meet them, they should talk to them, they should get to know them, and I think they'll be as impressed with them as the search committee was. So, you know, just to get that word out, okay? And then Wednesday the 24th is the final interviews. It would be great if we could have a lot of people here for those final interviews, particularly members of the two of Frontier and Union 38. That'd be great if we could all be here. Uh, we're gonna meet on the 22nd, and on the 22nd we can discuss questions. Um, Who's going to ask? What are you going to ask? This is just a, a sampling of questions <coughs> you, can, you can look at right now. Um, Who's meeting on the 22nd? I'm sorry? Who is meeting on the 22nd to discuss questions? Well, um, usually the school committee, but if not... I just didn't, I wasn't aware of a meeting that was posted yet, so we'll have to get on that. Okay. This, you want this whole body on the 22nd? Yes, or at least a quorum from each of you. We decide who's going to answer questions and what you're going to 
Who's going to ask the questions and what questions? No. No, we didn't no. decide no, that. We, we put that, that off. off. I would and we're not doing it tonight. <laughs> Unless you want to stay. And that's on the 22nd? That's on the 22nd, yes. Okay. What time do you have that scheduled, Pat? Sorry, six o'clock. Six o'clock? Six o'clock. I have, but if you want to make it earlier, that's fine. Well, the meet and greet is until 5 30, so. Well, you'll all be here. Oh, sorry. Bob? So, will we put off the questions? We're going to ask the questions last time. So, we're going to look at the questions first and decide on who's going to ask the questions. Okay, so here's, here's, my, here's my thought. If you see questions in here that you. That you like, send them to me. I would like to ask this question. Okay, send them to my email. Because you can, you can do that. You can send it all to me. I can respond to all of you. You cannot, unfortunately, respond to each other legally. But I can. I can say, okay, you know, question this question, that question. <coughs> have somebody to well, that's entirely that's entirely up to you. You know, we did, we had. Um, Nine question for eleven people. So, you know, you know, by well, that I don't time, I don't discuss the last time. We didn't vote on it. You know, the search committee has power, not power. You know, they've been through this whole thing. They should be the ones asking the questions, not the rest of us that weren't on the. <coughs> we and we talked about that last time, and we decided to put it on hold while we look at the questions. You know, if there's nine, if you want to pick nine, ten, eleven questions, pick them, and then have the search committee who's been going through the whole thing. They should ask the questions, not the rest of us that weren't on were part of it. Well, I, the only thing I'd like to add to that, Bob, wait is minute, that, that I think anybody on a committee should have the right to do a follow-up question, right. because you are going to be working with this individual, not just in this large body, but in your small towns at your tables and if you are not comfortable um, and perhaps a question or a follow-up question would would get you that comfort I think you need to feel that you can do that it, you know, the ball is in your court as school committee members right now okay, that you do this you appoint the superintendent you ask the question okay Keith and then over here and then you Bob. Keith yeah, I, would echo Marty. I, I think it's the, the job of the the search committee to bring candidate forward, but now as I'm getting to look at their resumes for the first time, there may be some possible questions that I have. So I would like, I would appreciate it if the whole committee gets that question. Mm -hmm. Not, you had yeah, okay. Bob, you had something? Uh, and then Phil. There's a whole bunch of questions the search committee asked. Yeah. Uh, and their responses to them. Did anybody keep track of the question and the response? Or is that sealed? We have the questions and we're happy to share them with you. <laughs> Um, I, I might even have copies in my in my handy dandy bag here, and if I do, I'll pass them out. Um, we don't have the responses. I only have what I wrote because everything else is going to be shredded because it was an executive session. But I'm sure if you went to have a cup of coffee and somebody mentioned that they asked a question. Wait, Bob. Wait, Bob. After they read the question. Phil, and then Travis. I just say that um, the, the, the questions, in my opinion, the questions that the committee put together, we worked hours on them yes. as well, and uh, they run laps around these things. We did just, uh, but going, going to your thing about who we should do it. Uh, no, no, no. We, 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 we designed questions that successfully elicited the information um, that we sought, in my opinion, most of the time. And these, if you really take a look at them, um, there's a lot of generic yeah, a lot of generic, a lot of gen generic ones. That well, gonna, she's offered to send us those yes, questions anyway, yep. so that takes the, care the, of that. The thing, the thing is that just about um, who should do it. You know, we've all had our chance. You know, I, I sat two feet away from each of these people and asked them questions for an hour and a half. Um, and I'm I'm okay with uh, you know all, all of us should feel uh, like a sense of owners, not ownership, but a sense of yeah, or, yeah, participation and right. all that. And, I think the more people that, uh, like, I, I kind of like Pat's suggestion, you know, email or something that strikes your fancy and uh, and do it. And, and by the way, some of our most, in my, also, this is just my opinion, sorry, um, some of our most valuable work was done 
in the after a little bit, in the follow-ups. Um, right. And, and in the, uh, the, when there was time left over in people going around just coming up with impromptu questions that were often pretty impressive. Um, and so there, there's all that that, that comes into play. So. Chad? I was just, oh, I've answered my question now that I've gone through it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Good. I just want to uh, clarify my understanding of the uh, executive session privilege. I understand that you can keep stuff out of the public uh, eye if there's some sort of bad result that could come from, from sharing it. So I'm wondering if you have responses from the candidates that you're actually putting forward. I understand that the names of the other candidates are privileged, but uh, I mean, is there any harm of, of sharing? Um, I can. I I'm happy to tell you what I wrote. Not that, but I think what I wrote was in keeping with the vote, and I wrote that during the interview, so I'm happy to share that with you. I'm, I'm you know, I really, I, I don't, I'm hard yeah, on candidates, so. It was a session, I don't know that anyone wrote down what their response was, okay. we were writing down our okay. impressions of their no, responses. I, really mm -hmm. I think we would enjoy <coughs> at least being able to look at the questions that were asked, I, I because it sounds like they may have been a higher tier up. And I can send them to you by email. I think sending an email. Uh, your stuff, maybe we can give you any additional notes we had from it, and then you can decide to share what you think. Sure, I can do that if you want me to. I have all your email addresses, so I'm happy to do that. So what was the suggestion? So what I if she shares what she has with the subcommittee to start, and we send back any additional things that we would have that we jotted down oh, on see, the individual see. questions for these two. Uh, and then well sifts through that and then sends to to the redundancy and whatever and then makes that information available to the this whole committee. Well it goes back to what was said over here though. I mean I and my notes are my impression of the person. It is it's not what they said. It's not what they said. It's true. And, you know, I don't think that. I think that's. I, I but if it's just send the questions, it's between right. it. Yeah. Right. Why, don't, why don't we do this? Send the questions, and we we can call one of our board representatives. If we have a question to, to gather further insight without getting it part of the public record and disclose it. I'm a little leery about all your. Your contemporaries notes being out there. I'm sure we're perfectly capable of meeting with two candidates and starting right. from this point and deciding the best one for the district. Yeah. So just just a straw vote, is everybody comfortable with getting the questions that they used? Questions are fine. Yeah. That they used. Okay. And then everything else is keep it to yourselves type I will of thing. Send them to you tomorrow. Okay. We'll That's have, great. Okay, the question. There are some hard copies here if whoever wants to take them. And there and, and Sarah put this together, which is really great. Um, it was like questions and um, scoring comments. What would you look? What were you looking for when that person answered the question? And these are the things you should be looking for. So this is outstanding. I don't think I have this, um, but Sarah will be back. So we're we gonna have a, a a vote on the 24th. Is that going to be on the agenda to vote for? Yes. It appears that that has been moved up to that we will I have a superintendent. No, no, no. no, it says by the 24th. Yeah. Wait. It's by the 24th. Because the original one was by the 10th. But which voted was the final interview on the 24th? No, I don't vote. believe so. No, I believe. Final. <coughs> so that's why I'm asking. Are we? Do we want to? Are we going to also? It's the finalist interview, so we vote. can make we can make a separate motion <coughs> for that. We don't have to vote that night, but we can. We have. You know what? We have yeah. to. We have to have an executive. I know. Uh, joint committee meeting on the 22nd. Can we take that vote then to, no, no we have oh, to do it now. Oh, vote to vote. To vote to on vote, the 24th, or should we do that right now? Yes. We, we have, I mean, you have a vote in place that says by the 10th yeah. of March. That's Why true. do we need to take another vote? If we have that to vote, take a vote place, that we night. do it if it says by, thank We you. can make okay. that decision Okay. If we do that it earlier, we're fine. We don't have to pre-establish it. Later it. Than March yeah, and you're, you're going to know. Just like the Sir committee knew. We could. 
Okay. How we could decide not to. We have to do it. Um, so. so you have it, and, and these are your candidates. Lynn Perry, she has an EDD. She's presently the interim assistant superintendent in Monadnock Regional School District in New Hampshire. And Catherine Clark, who's presently the regional director for Springboard Education in Lexington. She was in Danvers. Um, so that's what I can tell you about her. We have their resumes. Um, just a brief outline of who they are and their application on what we look for in an application. And here are their full packets. Um, yeah, these aren't actually their resumes, right? These are the... It's what you all have. Are they also yeah. in here? Okay, um, last question, Pat, because we need to move this along, is at the meet and greet, is there cookies and do you supply them? So, <laughs> I'm saying those aren't the resumes. Yeah. Those are the <laughs> application. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, as for Frontier, I'll entertain no, a motion to adjourn. Do, that. do I have a second? You have a second. All those in favor, raise your hand. Anybody opposed? Thank Good you. To go. uh, motion for the union. Okay. Yep. And second. Six thirty one. Six thirty one. And all in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you.